So quite a long time ago, we did some work around subtraction and subtraction using different methods. And we're going to revisit that again uh, today to start off, which will be really good. And um, then we're going to take information from graphs where not only do you have to read some information from graphs, but you're going to have to answer some questions where you need to take a few readings and then think about what the bigger picture is about what these graphs are telling you. So it's going to be really useful, really thought provoking. I'm going to start going back to all that work on subtraction. So to start off with today, we're going to go back and think about some different me methods for subtraction. I love some of these different strategies. Um, so we looked at this technique a, a number of weeks ago. 12 subtract 7. What's the difference between 12 and 7? 12 subtract 7 equals 5. The difference between 12 and 7 is 5. Now actually, that's the same as the difference between 13 and 8. 13 subtract 8 is also 5. Have a look at the picture. What's the same and what's different? Can you see the amount that we're taking away is one more? Um, and the, the quantity in total is one more as well. So this difference stays the same. Uh, so just in the same way, uh, 13 subtract 8 equals 5. Well, so is 14 subtract 9. That's 5 as well. Um, the answers are all the same. You notice here 12 subtract 7, 2 more to make 14, and 7, 2 more to make 9. And the answer is still the same. So let's say I was doing 63 subtract 38. Now, one thing I could do instead is just do 65 subtract 40. The answer to those calculations will be the same. It's just to find it easier answering 65 subtract 40 than 63 subtract 38. The answer is 25 to both. Let's have a look at another method for 63 subtract 38. Here is 63. Now, one thing that can be done is to break that 63 down. And this is one of my favourite ways. Split it into 40 and 23. Now, 40 is the next 10 up from 38. And now I can just take the 38 from this pile here. There. And it leaves me with two more in this pile. And this are the 23 here. So in total, I've got 25. Now, the last method, it might be one that you're most familiar with, actually, for how we do 63 subtract 38. We tend to say, well, I can't take the 8 away from these ones. So what we do is we break the 63 up into 50 and 13. And then I can take 8 away from this pile here. And that leaves me with 5. And then I can take 30 from this pile of 50. And that leaves me with 25. And that's like the written method that we often see. So I wonder if you can have a go. Let's have a look at 84 subtract 47. Can you do it in one way? Can you do it in different ways? Can you find three different ways? Pause the video and see how can you explore this one. Okay, and let's have a look. So 84 subtract 47. I could just do 87 subtract 50. Make both numbers three more. And that will give me the same answer as 84 subtract 47. The answer is 37. I could split the 84 up into 50 and 34. 50 is the next 10 up from 47. So I'm just going to take away the 47 from the 50. That leaves me with 3. I'll need to add that to that 34. Uh, so 3 plus 34, 37 as well. Or I could use that written method. Uh, 4 subtract 7, I can't do that. So uh, I'm going to change 84 into 70 and 14. 14 take away 7 is 7. 7 take away 4 is three. I wonder which of those methods you prefer or, or which you, you found really useful, which you found. Well, yesterday we looked at different kinds of graphs and why we need different kinds of graphs. Today, we're doing something slightly different. We're reading information from graphs. So for some of the graphs, it's just taking one reading. And for some of them, we really have to think deeply about the information that's required to, to answer the specific question. So this is really going to extend your thinking. Um, let's have a look at this graph to start off with. How children in class 3A travel to school. So some children walk, some go by car, some bus, some by bike. Now, a one-step question would be how many children bike to school? Because there, I only need to find out one thing to answer that question. Just look at this bar, how many children bike to school, read across, and this scale is between six and eight. It must be seven. A two-step question, I'll need to look at more than one piece of information for, though. How many more children walk than bike to school? Well, what would I need to compare? I need to think how many walk 
10. Um, how many bikes to school? 7. And so how many more is that? Well, that's three more. But can you see this is a two-step question because I need to look at more than one of the bars. Whereas a more open-ended question might be this. Uh, it might be, how physically active are the children in getting to school? And we might then look at, well, how many children, for example, walk or go by bike in comparison to those that, that go on, uh, on other vehicles. So have a look at these questions here. Um, and true or false? There are 10 children in the class. Is that true? There are 30 children in the class. And most of the children in the class walk to school. Pause the video. What do you think for those three questions? True or false? Okay, let's have a look. There are 10 children in the class. Actually, that's false. Um, because this scale does go up to 10, but that's that there's 10 children that walk. Now, if I add up all of the values, we work out how many children in total in this class. That's 10, and we've got another eight, that's 18, plus this five, 23, and the seven that go on the bike, there are 30 children in the class. Now, the last statement says, most of the children in the class walk to school. Now, can you see that this bar is the biggest? But it isn't most children that walk to school, because how many children walk to school? 10. And that's actually not most, because if I add up these bars, that's more than 10. It's 10 out of 30. And that's actually less than a half the children that walk to school. Have a look at this one. Which is the best performing train station? So this is a graph. I think we saw it yesterday. But I wonder if we can interpret it. So which station is doing the best? Now, this is the percentage of trains that arrive late at each station. So which is the best performing train station? Pause the video. What do you think? Well, it seems like it would be Sheffield, doesn't it? Because the best performing station, because it's the Sheffield bar is the biggest. But hang on a minute. This is the amount of the percentage of the trains that are arriving late. We don't want trains coming late. So actually the best station in this case is the one with the smallest bar, the, the lowest percentage of trains that are arriving late. You see how we have to read this graph slightly differently? Well, here's a similar graph. So this graph shows the percentage of trains that arrive late at different train stations for the first three months of the year. So here we have the percentage of trains arriving late. For every station, it's under 10%. Um, and we've got this blue bar shows January in Cardiff um, and January in Bristol and January in Swansea and January in Newport, and these four different places. And then we've got February represented by the orange bar and March by the grey one. So which train station has most trains arriving on time? And then question two, in which month are the trains least likely to arrive on time? Pause the video, have a think about that one. Okay, so the first question is we're looking for the train station that has most trains on time, the least trains arriving late. So we're looking for the station with the smallest bars. And it's Swansea here that has the least trains that are late, so the most that must be arriving on time. Question two, which month are the trains least likely to arrive on time? So which month has the most late trains? Well, I would say it looks like it's January here that the blue bars seem to be the, the taller ones on average. Um, maybe it's because of the bad weather that we get in January. Now, similarly, let's have a look at this graph here. And if you're reading this graph, attendance for school clubs. So again, we've seen this one before, I think. And let's say the school are collecting and they're seeing which, um, which children go to which school clubs. And we, we might have to look at this and think, well, what can this tell us about our school's clubs? So we could think of questions which we'd only need one piece of information to answer. Um, like, for example, how many children go to, let's say it's how many children go to Key Stage 2 Football Club? There might be questions which require more than one reading. Like, this many children go to music clubs. I'd have to look at these clubs and think, which ones are music clubs here? And then I might have a more general question, which is like, the most popular types of clubs are... And then we'd have to group the bars and think, is it, the, for example, the Key Stage 1 clubs or the sports clubs or which are most popular? 
Now, pause the video and see if you can come up with some different questions. So some questions where you just need to look at one bar, maybe some questions where we need to look at more than one bar to work out the answer. Um, can you think of any general questions? Which different questions could you ask based on this graph? Pause the video, see if you can come up with one or two. And so I wonder if you used any of those sentence stems to come up with those different questions. I would love to find out about any if you have. And please send me through the, the questions that you asked. We could come to them on Friday as well. Now, for your task today, you're going to interpret a survey that was done in some graphs. And it's for Bridge Green Primary School. So here are some of the questions that the teachers at Bridge Green Primary asked before choosing their next after school sports club. So they wanted to think, which sports club should we put on for our children? And these are some of the questions that the teachers asked. Are there different clubs for children in each year group? They were trying to see if there's a good spread of clubs uh, across the school. At the moment, are there more boys or girls are sports clubs? So it might be we, we think about which clubs could be good for the children where not as many of those children are going to their clubs. Some children don't enjoy sports like football or netball. What might they prefer? Have we got a good range of clubs? And then could we have another indoor club? That might be a question that the teachers asked. Now, for your main task today, we're going to look at the results from those questions. And you're going to have to advise hmm, what, what kind of club do you think the school should put on next and why? So let's go and have a look at that graph, where you'll find that graph, and then your task will be interpreting it. So here is today's one and only task. It's the only one, there's nothing underneath, it's just everyone, we're all going to have a go at this one. You find it by clicking that blue link that's underneath the video. So um, we're back to Bridge Green Primary School. So there are 56 children in Key Stage 1 and 119 children in Key Stage 2. This graph shows how many children go to each of the after-school sports clubs at the school. So we've got this many boys and this many girls at Key Stage 1 Football Club and so on and so on. So what does this graph show and give suggestions to Bridge Green Primary School about their next sports club? So we're really going to have to interpret this graph. Um, now you can do this at any level of detail and if you don't want to hear any suggestions then don't listen to the rest of this and you can come to your own conclusions. But I've got some tips for you. You might think, so 56 children in Key Stage 1, 119 in Key Stage 2. Should our next club be for Key Stage 1 or Key Stage 2 and why? What, what makes you think that? Should we do a club that might be more popular with boys or girls or could it be either? An indoor club or an outdoor club? Or, or either, can we have a sports club or a, any different kind of clubs than the ones here? Um, what do you think? See if you can explain why. I'd, I'd love to hear any explanations as to why. So you might think, oh, well, there aren't that many clubs for children who like this kind of sport. It, it might be, you look at. Or you might think, oh, well, we've got lots of the boys go and maybe some more of the girls or the other way around. Or maybe you think, well, we've got lots of clubs for Key Stage 1 or Key Stage 2. So have a look. What does this graph tell us? Um, what can we learn from that? And have you got any suggestions? I would love to know how you come to make those suggestions. Please send them through if you think you've got any particular great ideas. And again, I'm going to see you back tomorrow. Can't wait. Brilliant having you involved again. I, I thought we'd have to come back and just show you how the foals are getting on. So how are they growing there? Um, but it's been brilliant. Well done for joining in and I'll see you again tomorrow.